good morning and as uh, let me introduce i'm dr simha chalam uh, working as an assistant professor at nia dpr national institute of rural development in panchayati raj government of india neighboring to this institute only so we'll be dealing today there are two units the first unit will be on understanding of the maps uh, friends the map particularly you might have seen the mini maps right the map is very very important for various purposes even to know our own places and then planning purpose monitoring purpose even the evaluation of different research projects nowadays map being used right so i used to give an example as a informatic guy that the map is like a mirror the map will be used for a mirror particularly for planning of any project mirror what purpose we use at home we used to use the mirror isn't it to know how we appear what is the gap what is the overlap no isn't it to see the absolute location in case of when you put some bindi and all na so similar way this map also will help us for planning where should be what exactly and also how it's appear appear in the sense we see in mirror our own face in case of the planning purpose we see our geographical features how it look like in our own project area it may be on gram panchayat it may be block it may be district it may be whole state so we can see what is there what is not there where is there and also when we go some asset creation or implementation of various research projects we will be knowing through the map that where should be what by because this map will indicate exactly the site suitability analysis we have the gis software where the maps will be created through that software where should be what based on your land use land cover through the map based on your sloping pattern based on the physiograph of your geographical area right based on the soil type these are all will be indicated with the different maps right so through this map where should be what exactly in a scientific manner we can plan so maps are very very useful but in our syllabus we have different content about the maps types of maps what is the map how it go just quickly i'll try to cover what we have in our syllabus to deal with the same this is the introduction of uh, a map if you see the definition of the map it's a representation of the earth surface or any part of it with a definite scale map is a representation of the earth surface or any part of it with a definite scale scale map scale you might have seen or heard every map have a scale one is to 10000 scale one is to 50000 scale one is to 1 lakh in the map what does it mean if you see the map basically it will be represented like this maybe title in the bottom of the map basically scale used to written what does it mean scale means when you see the map scale the one unit on the map equals to 10000 units on the ground the ratio between map distance to the ground distance basically to understand the maps the scale is very very important right maybe 1 cm if you read in centimeter units you have to read 1 cm on the map equals to 10000 cm basically it will be 50000 1 lakh 2 lakh like that but here as a large scale mapping when you talk it's a 1 1 is to 5000 10000 like that when you plan map for a small area small area ke liye large scale use karte large scale in the sense less value it's a 50000 5000 1000 2000 is the large scale if it is 1 is to 50000 1 lakh is a small scale right this is the map scale which we used to see it means because 100 km road i have on the ground i cannot exactly 100 km draw on the map so i need to use some ratio to reduce the same that we use as a scale right this is the scale in fact to reduce your original parameters into the mappable parameters which the distance and all can be understand with the map here you will have title it's a pictorial means using some cartographic symbols pictures map will be represented of all your earth features maybe road maybe building maybe water body 
maybe any land use land cover, forest, everything which we can see with our human eye on the surface of the earth will be demarcated in a pictorial form with reference to the scale. And then it is the representation usually a flat surface of a whole or part of an area. Map when you see is a flat surface. But your geographical features are not flat. It's undulances. We have the hill, we have the valley, we have the different earth features we have. But when you see the map, it's a flat surface because it got projection. We will discuss in the next unit what is the projection, map projection. And then maps can display political boundaries, population, physical features, natural resources, roads, climates. Climate will be demarcated. Climate cannot see, but climate can be demarcated through the map. And it will communicate us what kind of climate is available in particular region or geographical area. Then elevation, topography, exact jadwal you can see in the map. And also economic activities, where, what, economic activities happening. You, through the map, you can able to understand and read. And this map will give you, like a large area can be seen. If you take example, for example, your own Gram Panchayat or village, if you ask somebody, how many number of water bodies there, you cannot answer. Those who are staying even in the village, they don't know. What is the area? Or if somebody asks, what was there 5 years back, 10 years back, was it the same now? Is there any difference? Nobody can answer. But the map will answer. Map will answer. So this, as we know, earth is not static. Bhugol is not static. Okay. So earth is not static, it's dynamic. Right? The things keep on changes you know, on the earth. If you see two months back, the full of water in the water body, now it become dry. Three months back, it was agriculture land, now it become fallow land. Five years back, the number of agriculture land is 100 hectares, now it becomes 70 hectares land. So, likewise, everything, many things, geographical things keep on changes. Earth is not static, it's a dynamic. So, once it's a dynamic, you have to see what's happening on the earth. Through the map, you can able to understand what's happening on the geographical area within your periphery. And map has distance, direction, shape and area. Map will have the distance. Direction, in which direction it is having north, is basically we indicate as a north. And then the shape and area, everything is there in the map. The job of a map to describe special relationships of specific features that the map aims to represent. And special relationships. So what is there here? It is a road is there, right? Nearby road, what are all other objects? We have geographical features. And also along with the road, where we have the culvert, where we have the bridge, that we can see and also this road is connecting between what kind of settlements village A, village B and the road is going village C. These spatial relations also you will be seeing in the map. Map will show you what is there, what is not there, where is there and its spatial relationships one to one. If, if you have the irrigation canal, what for the irrigation canal? How much agriculture land is covering? That you can see through the map. Maps are produced by cartographers. Cartography refers to the both the study of maps and the process of map making. It's a science of map, map making. If you say cartography means the science of map making. Basically, map jo banta hai, cartographic symbols, cartographic use karke maps prepare hota hai. And then maps were produced using land survey, triangulation, observations. And as technology advanced, maps were made using aerial photography and remote sensing. These two are now as a source to create a map. Maps used to create from the satellite image, from the topographical map, that is survey of India topo sheet, then aerial photographs, and also we have cadastral map, which is there at the land parcel mapping, but for each and every revenue village having one one map, to know the land ownership. The parcel of land belongs to whom in the village will be known through the cadastral map. So those maps are also available. So these are all maps can be used as a source to create another map. Right? So these are all different sources. Even satellite image is the main source to create now different various maps to understand our geography. So cartography is the main science of making maps. Right? And now we have a modern cartography that is GIS software which enables to create your own maps, different thematic maps political maps, different maps can be generated in a scientific and digital manner using the GIS software. We will be discussing the what exactly that in coming slides. 
Then properties of the maps, there are four basic properties of a map that uh, distort to some degree depending on the map projection. Then conformality or orthomism that which indicates the shape of the map. And another one is equivalence, which indicates the area of the map. Then the true direction, true distance. If you see about these four which are the components of the map are very very important. Shape, direction and then we have the distance of the map. All right. So these four are very very important when you create a map of your own geographical area. I think you have this presentation. So what kind of maps available? If you see, according to the inter, uh, Intergovernmental Committee on Surveying and Mapping, there are five different types of maps available, which is there in your study material. You have to, if somebody question may come like, please mention the types of maps. You have to give these five types only. So who is what uh, as per what reference if somebody asks reference or as per which organization you say this five types map you have to mention that ICSM that is Intergovernmental Committee on Surveying and Mapping. According to them there are five types of maps. The first and foremost map is cadastral map. A cadastral map is a detailed representation of a property within a specific area the plans map out individual properties providing details basically this cadastral map for the one revenue village it will be done it's not for gram panchayat it's not for block or state or anything the cadastral map when you talk the first one is only one revenue village where you can see the different uh, what do you call the cells no small small the boxes which you are seeing in a layman long ways the each and every box indicating the parcel of land where this map will indicate that the parcel of land belongs to whom? Is it government land or is it private land? If it is private land again, on which name, who is the owner of that parcel of the land? It may be agricultural land, it may be waste land, it may be anything in the revenue village. The land, each and everything being mapped, you can see this is the boundary of the revenue village. Right? This is the cadastral map. And here if you see the legend or map index, her map ka niche up dek sakte. Every map having the bottom of the map, basically they read map index or legend means to read the particular map, you should understand this index. What color indicating what, what pattern indicating, sometimes continuous line, sometimes dotted line, sometimes continuous and dot line. What is indicating what in the map, you have to understand. If one blue color is water body, wherever you see the blue color, you have to see, you have to read as a water body. It's a kind of uh, alphabets to read particular language. If you want to read English, then you should know A, B, C, D, till Z. Similar way, to read the map, you should know the index first. Map ka niche jo index hai, usko padna hai pehle, map ka padne ke liye. Otherwise, you cannot read, you become blind here. Without seeing this index, you don't know anything, what is red, what is blue. So, map index is very, very important. Right? A map index or legend map legend bolta hai. That the, after seeing this you can read the map ok so this is the cadastral map basically cadastral maps having a large scale the 1 is to 5000 1 is to 6000 scale may ban chuke these maps are available with the revenue department in our case state of Assam we have circle office the circle office people having this cadastral map if you wish to have your own project when you make it you can take it from them. You may think that what is the use of this cadastral for research purpose? Yes, it's so much. For example, due to the floods, so much agricultural land vanished, right? Flooded, right? Inundated. So in that case, you want to estimate the loss quickly. You have the satellite image. And then if you overlay this cadastral image on the satellite data, quickly you can identify it. whose land, who has lost, how much he or she has lost the land because of the particular floods. The, when you got the ownership of the land, quickly you can assess. Otherwise, what will happen normally? People used to climb number one. If I am having two hectares of land, still I climb, no, no, four bigger, ten bigger land, my pani me dub gaya hai. Because the officer also cannot judge within a short time, he cannot take chain survey and measure the parcel of land. Kaha hai, kitna hai. Murgad, if you have the satellite imagery and the software and this cadastral scientific banner in a quick with the less time, with the less manpower, less money, quickly you can able to assess in a scientific manner accurately who really has lost due to the floods, how much he has lost 
the particular land, you know, agriculture, cropping land, etc., you can estimate. For this, this ownership map is very, very important. That is cadastral map. <coughs> cadastral map. The second one is topographic map. Second map is topographic map, which, which indicates different physical landscapes on the earth's surface. These maps are different on the other hand because they use contour lines rather than the color. In topographic maps, when you see in the topo shade, they will not use much color. They may use two, three colors also here even topography. But basically to indicate your topography, they use the, to know the jet value elevation, they use the contours. These are the lines which you are seeing, no? I say, what do you call, uh, I'm not getting, solid, no? Which make it round, round, no? So this, yeah, uh, this, you can see here, these are the contours. Contour means it is an imaginary line with same elevation. Wherever it's same elevation, you join the same elevation. Aise karke hoga. Kabhi kabhi aise bhi jayega. So means wherever the line is going, it's the same elevation, it got the value too. Suppose it is 400 elevation, This, if it is 20 meter interval of the contour, uh, it may be 380, coming down 360, 340, 20 meter contour interval, where once you have the 150,000 scale, topo is basically it got 20 meters interval of the contour line. One line say dusra line ko 20 meter interval hoga. 20 meters interval hai. Right? So here these are the contour which will give the jet value of your own area. Elevation is say but hamara in your geographical area in which place what how much elevation you have will be known with the contour map. These are the contours you see. If you zoom in and GIS properly, you can extract the contour value you written. But all each and every contour will not have the value. But every hundred meters, you will have the contour value on the contour. It will be represented in the topo sheet. 300, 400, 500, 600, only the hundreds when you come, no? That you can see here. Right? Those values indicating the hundred one. In between four to five contours, you can see. And the next will be, the third one will be thematic map. Thematic maps are data maps of a unique to topic or for a specific purpose. It's different from the thematic maps are the dot map, isopleth, chloropleth, or chorochromatic. Different maps say the same area you see the boundary, but theme wise, Oka, the one map indicating all the available roads that we call road map. Theme wise, the another map will have agriculture land. Only you can see in the map agriculture land. Boundary is remain same. The second one will be water bodies. What are all water bodies you have within the same area? Maybe it block, district or GP, it doesn't matter. You see here the same boundary, different theme you are seeing. This we call thematic map. The specific theme will indicate only. Now you cannot see everything like satellite image or topographical maps. Topo sheet if you see, you will see roads, you will see water body, you will also see uh, what do you call forest land, you can see agriculture land, everything you can see. But in the thematic map, you cannot see like that. The specific theme you can see. Right? Any doubt? If you have any doubt, in, in between also you can ask me. Absolutely no problem. Right? So these are the called thematic map. This is the third one. And we have two more types. The first one is contour, uh, sorry, or a cadastral map. Second one is topographic map, which indicates in fact jet elevation. Third one is thematic map. Theme-wise maps will be created using different colors or pattern. Right, you can see here in the picture, and the fourth one will be political map. These political maps are made to show administrative boundaries of nations, states, countries, city, town. It may be gram panchayat boundary, it may be revenue village boundary. There are many with the administrative boundaries. With the administrative boundaries, sometimes even assembly constituency, parliamentary constituency boundary, also you can see. So these boundaries called political map, city boundary, very, very will be demarcated right in the map. The next one is navigational chart map. It's a map that shows the layout of the shoreline and sea, uh, what the sea floor. So these maps will indicate directly with the layout of having different, for example, in the ocean also you will have the boundary, isn't it? So up to where one can move, up to India continent where it is in the ocean itself, these maps you can see, navigational chart map. Right? Up to our own, uh, uh, what is that, periphery in the geographical area you can see. And after that you have the general reference map. 
it's like a regular map which towns cities name you can see like our google maps etc uh, major transportation routes and included together with the natural features like lake river etc common thing everything you can see like google earth google maps etc called general reference map right to move to traveling from one place to other place you can see this general reference map where from one point to another point you can travel and also from origin to destination and to find out different locations right which unknown locations can be demarcated with this these maps are called general reference map a reference purpose to find out unknown places these maps can be used then we have road map you see general reference maps if you see under general reference maps you have the road map all existing road network can be seen and also you can see physical map right yeah road basically the road map where we use when you travel one place to other place basically this will be used and also physical map displays the natural landscape and also the definition of the physical map is the geographical features of a location all geographical features can be identified in the physical map after that you have the climate map to know the climatic conditions it may be region wise it may be different but that will be indicated the same pressure or temperature rainfall wherever it is occurring through this linear features through this different colors it will be indicated what does it mean if temp same temperature is indicating we use isotherms then we have isobars for rainfall those will be indicated in the mapable form to know where temperature is more where is moderate where is less everything can be seen in the mapable form so significance of map the importance of the map is maps communicate and foster understanding why because map is a pictorial form where a layman can understand what he is having what she is having in their own respective geographical area it's a pictorial form pictures if you see in our uh, now in the villages in many things you no know, to what you publish to communicate something earlier we used to write a text board by alcohol is strictly prohibited alcohol is injurious to health even smoking is injurious to health na but now what we are doing in the name of text we are using some graphical representation pictorial form some pictures being used why why pictures being used one is easy to understand another one is illiterate the layman can understand quickly and it will give more impact than the text even the illiterate also if i read it will not give much impact on the cigarette box tobacco box if i keep some photo no where cancer is occurring very dangerous photo so at least i have read oh it's very dangerous to health such a manner the pictorial form map will communicate very foster understanding or layman can understanding i can say another word what is there what is not there in our geographical area and then gis maps provide windows into useful information may kinds of descriptive information can be stored with a map map provide a powerful way to tell any kinds of stories maps can display dynamic information that changes over a time map help us to perform analysis maps can be used to compile data what does it mean this significance is the one first one indicating layman can understanding second one is it will give you a lot of things what's there what is not there the third point is indicating changes time how it was 5 years back how it is how 10 years back you can see in three maps quickly you can uh, understand bhai how our geographical features are changing for example 15 years back in my gram panchayat lots of water bodies there may be 75 now only 25 i have so what i need to do i have to concentrate more and more irrigation and water body facil water bodies because i'm losing those agriculture will impact to my agriculture sector as we know our country india is a rural country we have around 70% people lives in the rural area their main occupation is agriculture the agriculture depends on natural resource management where natural resource management is very very important in this regard you should know natural resource how it is changing whether it is destroying destroying or it's regenerating if you see we disturbing a lots of natural resources even in gauhati city you see if you take the satellite image of 10 15 years back you see how much land was vacant even where you are now it was a small kind of wetland you know 
Now you can see the concrete jungle. The birds used to come, it used to migrate. Likewise, many places. If you see the number of water bodies, you see the surrounded by the Gauti city. It was hills, green hills, if you did 10, 15 years back. Just 15 years back. Now, from the valley to ridge, the hilltop, all the settlements are being increased. The illegal occupancy is another word because we are disturbing the nature. All hills, if you see, surrounded by the Gauti, being occupied till the ridge level, till top. By early days, only the valley or some portion of the foothills, people used to make construction of the house. So what's happening? How we know that? How we assess that? Why Gauti now in the month of November, you're all wearing half shirt or putting AC without fan. We're not sleeping till the entering into the December. Was it conditioned 10, 15 years back? Never. I was here last 12 years. I'm saying. So these are all, we are disturbing nature. Nature will disturb us. But how we read that? How much quantification we are disturbing? How much quantification nature is disturbing us can be measured through these maps because 10 15 years back how it was you can see only with the help of map that is satellite image no other option will know the cell pehle kya hai b cell kya hai aapka geographical area you cannot see but satellite data can be seen archive data is available with this you can understand hare bhai population is 80 percent 70 percent and our fellow lands are increasing every year agricultural lands are coming down so just to imagine to the next generation what will impact if every 10 years cropping area is coming down then what will happen it will lots of impact will come on food grains we will not get any food grains in future right to prevent that particular crisis you have to plan accurately a scientific manner for that maps are very very useful friends these maps are gis not only for any particular science or technology it's for a common man as a gis man i'm telling it you should be used for a common man in any subject gis can be used why because this only subject where it speaks with the geography and all the department subjects we are all describing for the geographical features without geography none of the science none of the social science are working or studying isn't it anywhere you work social work yes Ultimately, you have to understand the geography. Health, you have to understand the geographical features. Education, you have to understand the geographical features. Any developmental sector, it may be drinking water, roads department, agriculture department, water resource department, any department, they must understand the geography. To read, to understand the geography, your GIS and maps are only feasible and scientific tool to assess what's happening on the earth. Right? That way, it will be very useful for planning, monitoring of any kind not only nature or natural phenomena, you can also assess your physical features or infrastructure, man-made resources can be assessed, monitored through the map only, right? These are the different map projection systems which are very important to understand. Uh, map projection can be defined a technique to transform and present three-dimension at surface on a flat or plane surface. Uh, there are two step process procedure we have in map projection in GIS system. The one is the earth is reduced to a generating globe where whichever study you take where it is on the earth where it is on the globe will be studied that is gcs we call geographical coordinate system first projection the second projection will be the generating globe is drawn a flat surface globe is three-dimensional view when you convert from three-dimensional surface to two-dimensional surface it called projection pcs both the projected coordinate system the one is GCS, Geographic Coordinate System, when these geographical features were there on the globe. And second one is those three-dimensional surface, because map is two-dimensional one, flat. To convert as a flat map to your three-dimensional view, we call, we use PCS, Projected Coordinate System. So there, there are three ma two map projection sir, systems are available in the GIS and maps. And different, different types of map projections also there, but basically these two are important. Right, we have based on the de uh, developable surface, genital map projection, continental uh, conical map projection, based on the shape, based on the area, based on the uh, cylindrical map projection. Right, but purpose is same. Right, I am not going to discuss each and everything. And based on area, shape, direction, and scale, different map projections we have. What you are concentrating on the map, whether you are concentrating on the area, or you want to consider on the shape, you want to consider direction or scale. Based on that, there are four kinds of map projections available. Right? 
the, what is this study material also there? I have given simplified in, in fact in the PPT, which is shared I think madam with you all. You can go through it, right? That will help you. Some commonly used map projections in JS. Mercator one is very, I mean, uh, popular one. And the second one is UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator. This projection is now the, across the globe being used. The unique map projection will that. Projection two types. Yes, slide say be first jo bola mene. There are two types of map projections. The one is geographic coordinate system projection say GCS bolta hai. Another one is projected coordinate system. So pehla projection, first projection indicates that where is the geographical features located on the globe, on the earth. That will set. Second one is globe is not two dimensional but your maps are two dimensional. To convert that three dimensional globe into two dimensional we use PCS. Projected coordinate system. These are all projections being used for that. Okay. Because you want to get a measurement. But how you get measurement? There is a hilly area. Right. So it should be using some mathematical calculations. GIS software convert that. 3D to 2D as a map. Where you can get the proper measurements on the map. Right. Just some clip all this. Uh, just skip. But you basically first three are very important projections where we use in different research purposes. Mercator, Universal Transverse Mercator, UTM is a unique projection now used by many people to convert from 3D to 2D. Then polyconic projection also very important, right? A Lombard conformal and all, these are different projections you can see in the Google Earth and different other features. But when you generate your maps, basically we use now UTM one. Yeah, these are the map projections for hemisphere. Friends, this is given already in reading material. Just some skip all this. Yeah, this projection is important. What is UTM? Universal Transverse Market, also known as UTM, is a very popular and one of the most widely projection system in GIS software. Right? What they done is in the UTM, whole globe being given UTM zone. When you project, project your from three dimensional to two dimensional, you select your own projection system of your geographical area. Basically, India is indicating a north hemisphere, so 43 north, 42 north, 44 north, like that. So our area comes under 46 north, 99% of northeast region, 46 north, UTM zone 46 north. When you do some GIS practical things, you have to convert this 3D to 2D, then use this map projection, UTM only. So how the zones being continuously given, but your longitude values are differ from here, 180 from Greenwich East, 180 longitudes west. In between there is a Greenwich curve, but your UTM zones are continued. So for that, Longitude value is very very important to get this UTM zone. There is a small formula. Average longitude value by divided by 2 plus 30. Then you will get your UTM zone. Right? Aapka UTM zone jab mapping karta hai, kitna hai malam hona to average longitude value divided by 2. Why this 2 is? You have 0 in between, right? So that you need to... Uh, sorry, the longitude value has to be divided because minimum, maximum you do. And then you have plus 30. I'm sorry. The average longitude value divided by 6. Because 6 degree longitude value equal to one, UT, uh, one zone, UTM zone. 6 degree longitude value equal to one UTM zone. That's why you have to divide your longitude value by 6 plus 30. Why this 30 is, you are in eastern part, our country is in eastern part, but this 30 zones has to be added. UTM was not breaking over there, it was continued, 30, 31, 32, 33 like this. So this 30 has to be added, then you will get your own UTM zone. Probably in the entire northeast region, whichever you do for mapping or conversion or projection, map projection, that will come 45.1, 45.3, 45.4 like that. So it means it's a 45th, 46th zone. Yeah, it was written even, you can see, UTM 46 North zone represents Assam in GID, uh, in GIS grid system, okay, in the last uh, paragraph can be seen. Okay, this is the ITRF, International Territorial Reference Frame, it's a standard and ideal coordinate reference system in GIS, but we are not using this, okay, but we use only UTM, please remember that, okay, for converting three-dimensional to two-dimensional surface.